Hi everyone, we're uh, just breaking down the video from Sambila Bubbles uh, and in the theme of uh, working with what we have, you can see I have prepared my mannequin by doing small braids. The braids are off base so that I'm not having a lot of sections that I have to deal with as I try to pull up the hair later. Uh, these braids have all been flat ironed and set and left to cool. There's approximately about 20 braids, uh, each section ranging about two inches by two inch square, sitting at the lower part again, because I want it to be off base so that I'm not contending with the sections as I pull it up into the various ponytails as shown in the video. So as you can see, I've taken down the braids and uh, I've achieved the volume that I was hoping for. Obviously a micro crimping tool would be the most beneficial but again we're working what, with what we have at home so the mini, the tiny braids excuse me um, have provided me with the good foundation to achieve the over exaggerated bubbles uh, shown in the San Vila video and also because I, I, I haven't brushed out the hair I literally just took down the braids and allowed the hair to fall as it will um, and because I did use fairly large, so two inch by two inch um, square sections, off base control. So I wasn't worried about having volume at the roots because the hair will be brought up in ponytails. I wanted that volume in through the ends to give me texture without having to do a lot of back combing or back brushing. Uh, but again, because the sections that I used in the base placement or base control with the braids, you can see I'm not contending with a whole bunch of uh, separation throughout my design so that'll make my ponytails very easily achieved without much frustration. Okay so now I've uh, taken my mannequin and have subdivided it as indicated by the video so I'm going to break that down. So first thing that I did was copy uh, the pictogram that he had outlined in order to use as my guide for my different sections and then I followed it here. Now on the video he did note that there's six sections and, and there indeed are however there is actually eight ponytails in total so let's break it down so the front section or the fringe if you want to call it that way goes from the recess of the forehead back to a point and it's not quite the center if, if i'm uh, lining it up in regards to the anatomy um, you can see it it's nowhere near the tip of the ear it's a little bit further back so it's sorry further forward so if we look at the apex of the head I'm, I am away from that where that sort of comes back to then he took that square or rectangle shaped section at the top of the head and created two ponytails so that's the two that I'm referring to there and then the remaining part from that rectangle section is there so in reference to my image here, actually I'll do this one, it's a little bit better. Uh, I have my four sections from the top. Moving into the back uh, is really where I wanted to focus with you because this bottom section, the nape is divided into two or the back section is divided into two. But this ponytail, actually the hair comes right from the sides to that, then leaving the nape as its own. And these two back ponytails, so the one and two, are actually then subdivided into two more ponytails. And I apologize uh, for the video, sometimes being close. Hopefully you're able to get the idea. I just wanted to slow it down for you from that video because I know I did have to take a little bit of time myself. And of course, uh, I've used colored elastics to show how to secure it. Ideally, uh, you want elastics as I've done up top here that are similar in color. So either the clear, in this case, I'm uh, using a blonde mannequin, so I'm using yellow elastics, uh, but I could easily have used the clear. So um, if this was a real scenario I wouldn't be using the multicolor because you, as you will see when I actually perform one section of this the elastics will be shown in the overall end result so we don't want those fancy colors 
to be shown unless you plan on covering them with some sort of ornamentation later in the uh, finished look. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now creating the bubbles the way he has done it. Uh, again, if you want extra volume, you could go in and back home before you secure it uh, in the elastics, the individual elastics. But basically all you're doing is now taking the hair and starting and holding it from the tips, just a, a small, small section and encouraging those elastics down the hair. Now I did find when I was sort of doing a, a practice run of this that I had to take the hair and, and almost expand it myself and then push down those elastics to create the bubbles. So feel free to work it and, and create as much volume as expanded as you feel necessary in order to create that finished or desired volume. So again, I was pulling it apart and then I push that elastic down. I pull this apart to get lots of volume in through there. You wanna watch, sometimes you're gonna to have to go back and forth between pieces that you've already done. So try not to pull it from those areas. Push those elastics down to create that volume. Again, holding those end pieces at different times. Expand this out. And, just, and the elastics can be set at different distances. They don't have to be all equal. I'm just gonna adjust this one here so it has a little bit more room. If I find as I pull out that, oh, I'm gonna need some of those ends as I, I'll just remove that. And don't worry about these ends. That doesn't need to be secured off an elastic because it's going to be um, secured underneath these bubbles anyways. So I'm just, and this is a very messy do. It's, it's supposed to be that, as he said, a very editorial look. He used the chamois at the end to actually bring out hair and create texture. And now I'm just gonna see how that hair wants to fall. Trying to keep those bubbles going. Play with it, expand the form. And then using the hairpin with the little hook, I go in and you can see that doesn't come out then as easily. You could also use bobby pins. I have both. Again, just take it. It doesn't need to be opened and secure it in. Now this design is, is creates a full hawk texture. So my next one, I would go in, expand the form, bring it out, and I'm going to continue to do that all the way down the center of the head, building this, building height, building volume, manipulating these sections as I need them to be manipulated. Uh, because I go out a little bit wider here, I can have a little bit and then it can come in more conical. I could build these in more to have it more of a true faux hawk style. That's gonna to be totally up to you in your final product and your design.